It started innocuously enough, just a mild headache after lunch at the office. I didn't think much of it at first. Maybe it was the fluorescent lights, or perhaps the stress of meeting deadlines. But as days turned into weeks, the headaches became more frequent, more debilitating. Every time my boss, Mr. Thompson, ordered lunch for the team, I found myself in a haze of pain by mid-afternoon. I wasn't alone. A few of my colleagues mentioned feeling off as well, but no one connected the dots. It was just one of those things we all thought. Office life could be stressful, and it wasn't uncommon to feel under the weather now and then. Yet, something in my gut told me there was more to it. I had to find out what was really going on. As I began to pay closer attention, a pattern emerged. The headaches were always worst on days when Mr. Thompson ordered lunch. On days when I brought my own food or when we went out to eat, I felt fine, it was uncanny, and it left me wondering if it was something in the food itself. My suspicions grew stronger one Friday afternoon. Mr. Thompson had ordered Chinese takeout for the team. By 2 p.m., I was clutching my head, the pain so intense that it blurred my vision. I glanced around the office and noticed Sarah rubbing her temples, Mike leaning back in his chair with a grimace, and Kelly popping an ibuprofen. Is it just me, or does anyone else feel awful after lunch today? I ventured to ask. You're not alone, Sarah replied, wincing. I've had this splitting headache since lunch. Me too, Mike added, looking pale. It wasn't just me. There was definitely something in the food. But what? Determined to uncover the truth, I decided to conduct a covert investigation. The following Monday, I brought my own lunch and discreetly swapped it with the meal Mr. Thompson had ordered for me. I observed him eating my homemade salad while I cautiously nibbled on the pasta dish he had chosen. Within an hour, the familiar throbbing began at my temples, confirming my suspicion. It wasn't just stress or the office environment, it was something in the food Mr. Thompson was ordering. But why? Why would the food cause such a reaction? And why only the food ordered by Mr. Thompson? It didn't add up. I knew I needed to dig deeper. Taking a more scientific approach, I began keeping a detailed log of everything I ate, how I felt, and whether Mr. Thompson had ordered the meal. I also convinced a few colleagues to do the same. We soon noticed that the headaches were almost exclusively linked to the meals Mr. Thompson provided. I took samples of the food to a lab for testing, hoping to find some clue. The results were shocking. High levels of MSG and other additives. While these substances aren't necessarily harmful in small amounts, the levels in the food we were consuming were far beyond the norm. Armed with this information, I decided to confront Mr. Thompson. I was nervous. What if he dismissed my concerns or, worse, retaliated against me? But I had to do it. For my health and the health of my colleagues, I had to find out why he was ordering such questionable food. Mr. Thompson, can I have a word? I asked, knocking on his office door one afternoon. He looked up from his desk, his expression unreadable. Sure, Emma. What's on your mind? Taking a deep breath, I laid out my findings, the headaches, the food logs, the lab results. To my surprise, Mr. Thompson didn't react with anger or disbelief. Instead, he looked genuinely concerned. I had no idea, he said, his brow furrowing. I just ordered from a list of approved vendors. I assumed the food was safe. I handed him the lab report. The levels of additives are incredibly high. It's making us all sick. Mr. Thompson's face paled as he read through the results. This is unacceptable. I'll address this immediately. Thank you for bringing it to my attention, Emma. While I was relieved that Mr. Thompson took my concerns seriously, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. Why would an approved vendor be using such high levels of additives? I decided to investigate the vendors themselves. A few discreet phone calls revealed a troubling truth. The vendor supplying our office lunches was cutting corners to save costs, using cheaper, low-quality ingredients loaded with additives to enhance flavor and shelf life. It was a cost-cutting measure that had serious health implications. With this information, I returned to Mr. Thompson. We need to change vendors, I said firmly, and we need to inform everyone about what's been going on. He nodded, his expression grim. You're right. 
I'll handle the vendor situation. Can you help me put together a memo for the staff? The following Monday, Mr. Thompson called a meeting with the entire office. He explained the situation, apologized for the oversight, and assured everyone that steps were being taken to address the issue. We were switching vendors immediately, and he promised to be more vigilant about the quality of the food we consumed at work. As I looked around the room, I saw relief and gratitude on my colleagues' faces. They thanked me for speaking up, and I felt a sense of accomplishment knowing that we were taking steps to ensure our workplace was a healthier environment. With the new vendor in place, the change was almost immediate. The headaches stopped, and everyone seemed to have more energy and focus. It was amazing how much of an impact something as simple as the quality of our food could have on our overall well-being. I continued to monitor the situation, keeping a close eye on how the new food made us feel. It was a significant improvement, and morale in the office improved as well. People were happier, more productive, and grateful that the issue had been resolved. The experience taught me a lot about the importance of speaking up and taking action. It wasn't easy to confront my boss or to dig into a problem that others might have ignored. But by doing so, I not only improved my own health, but also made a positive impact on my colleagues and our workplace environment. I also learned the importance of vigilance and transparency. It's easy to take things for granted, but sometimes we need to look a little closer and ask questions, even when it's uncomfortable. In doing so, we can uncover hidden truths and make meaningful changes. Months passed, and the memory of those debilitating headaches began to fade. The office was a much happier and healthier place, and I felt a sense of pride knowing that I had played a role in making it so. One afternoon, as I was packing up to leave for the day, Mr. Thompson called me into his office. Emma, I wanted to thank you again for everything you did, he said, handing me a small envelope. Inside was a gift card to my favorite restaurant and a handwritten note of appreciation. You went above and beyond, and it didn't go unnoticed. I'm grateful for your dedication and courage. The story didn't end there. Word of our experience spread, and I was invited to speak at a local health and wellness conference. I shared our journey, emphasizing the importance of advocating for one's health and the impact of seemingly small changes. It was empowering to share our story and to see how it resonated with others. People approached me afterward, thanking me for shedding light on an issue that many had experienced but few had understood. As I reflect on everything that happened, I'm grateful for the challenges we faced. They pushed me to grow, to advocate for myself and others, and to make a positive difference in my workplace and beyond. Today, I continue to prioritize health and wellness, both personally and professionally. I'm more vigilant about what I eat, and I encourage my colleagues to do the same. I've also started a wellness committee at work, focusing on promoting healthy habits and ensuring we have a supportive environment. Our office is now a model of health and wellness. We've implemented regular health checks, provide fresh and nutritious snacks, and offer wellness workshops. The change in our environment has been profound, fostering a culture of care and respect. Looking back, I realized that the headaches were a blessing in disguise. They forced us to confront an issue that was affecting our well-being and led us to create a healthier, happier workplace. It's a reminder that sometimes that the most unexpected challenges can lead to the most meaningful growth. And so the story of the mysterious headaches ends on a positive note. We uncovered the truth, made necessary changes, and emerged stronger and healthier. It's a testament to the power of speaking up the importance of vigilance, and the impact of advocating for what's right. I'm really keen to know your thoughts on this story, so please don't hesitate to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it engaging, I invite you to subscribe to our channel for more similar content. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family to spread the enjoyment. Take good care of yourselves, and I'm excited to connect with you in our future videos.